All right, again, thank you for joining me today. My name is Ken Hearn, and this is part of our Take 10 webinars for Premise Health. And today we're gonna to be going through movement preparation. Just a little bit quickly about myself. Uh, I preside in uh, Connecticut, and I've been in the fitness industry for about 25 years. Uh, most recently in my uh, studies, I've really taken to movement patterns and how the body moves and how we move as human beings. And kind of looking at that as a different approach than our standard, hey, let's do three sets of 12 of this, let's do uh, a lot of strength training here. And that's, you know, we wanna look at how people are moving. Everybody does a squat differently. And that's okay sometimes. And sometimes there could be a bad movement pattern there where the squat is actually making it worse than getting you stronger. So those are some of the things that led into uh, some discussions. There's myofascial release, there's all, and then movement preparation comes in there. Uh, we'll probably get to myofascial release at another webinar, but today we're gonna focus on that movement preparation. So again, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me. And I'll try to not take up too much of your time. So just a quick little outline of what we're going to be reviewing. We're going to talk a little bit about the warm up. We're going to talk about why warm up is important. And then we're going to kind of compare that stretching cardio versus movement prep. Um, in movement preparation, I'll shorten it down to movement prep. But And then we're going to kind of talk about why we need movement preparation. And then um, as advertised, I'm going to go ahead and share a link so that everybody can access a movement preparation routine that they can try on their own. And also you can reach out to your, uh, your health coach uh, through your portal to uh, review any of the exercises that you need. The exercise platform that we're gonna give you or the exercise um, routine that we're gonna give you has pictures, descriptions. So it should be uh, pretty easy to follow through, but we'll, uh, we'll go through that briefly when we get to the end here. Let's go ahead and get into it. So a warm up, a warm up is defined as preparing the body for that physical exertion or performance by exercising or practicing gently beforehand. So one of the things we think about with the with the warm up when we talk about practicing or gently beforehand, a lot of us remember the old school warm up of some sort of cardiovascular activity. If we were playing sports, it was run around the soccer field or the baseball field and then do some stretches. If we're at the gym, it may be uh, get up on a treadmill or a bike and do that for five or 15 minutes. We're trying to prepare the body properly for training in competition. And you know we wanna make sure that when we perform potential uh, warm up exercises, we're reducing, reducing that risk of injury. That's our main concern here. So the warm up, its goal is to prepare the body for the, for the work and to reduce that risk of injury by preparing it correctly. We wanna warm the tissue, we wanna elongate the tissue, which is our muscles, and we wanna also activate the tissue. This is telling them that, hey, we're ready to do something here. So as we just talked about, why is that warm up important? We The best example is thinking of your muscles like rubber bands and we, a lot of us are spending all day sitting at the desk some of us may not be but we may be hunched over that keyboard we may be uh standing and hunched over still we may be sitting and letting those hip flexors and things getting tight those rubber bands when they're not used if you've ever opened an old bag of rubber bands they get very brittle because they're not stretching and relaxing which is what they're supposed to do so what happens is they get very stiff very brittle now, you could even combine that lack of movement with some cold winter weather if you're in a winter area or just uh, stagnant, stagnant body. And then you go to the gym or you get outside, or you go home and you wanna do an activity. You could start lifting heavy weights in the gym. You could start sprinting really fast outside. You could start going at it. And these colds, unstretched rubber bands, if you will, are muscles get pulled apart very quickly. And that's when they have the potential to snap, right? That's when we see strains uh, from the muscles. We always hear muscle strain. A muscle strain is when connective tissue in the muscle gets ripped or snapped. And then we feel that big ball or like tightness and swelling all comes from our body trying to repair that. And what we wanna try to do is we wanna try to get those rubber bands so we start stretching them out and releasing them so that they're really ready to go and they're not gonna have that snap reflex. 
So movement prep is, is something that we'll get into to talk about that. But realistically, when we talk about warming up, it's just a really important thing. And this is not just for workouts. Warm-ups are for any activity. As I mentioned, you could be going and doing a field day. You could be doing uh, some, some fun exercises with your uh, children or just with friends. We want to pre prepare our body for movement there as well. That's usually the most dangerous spots. You're going to go for a hike. We just think, oh, we're walking, so we're getting our body warmed up. Not true. If we're hiking and we're, and we're elevating our legs every time, we're working more hip flexor, glutes, we can have some potential for injury there. So we really want to make sure that we're always warming up for any type of extended movement that we're going to do. All right, so let's kind of talk about the stretching and the cardio. We, we've, we've all done these before if we've grown up in any sporting programs and even at the uh, fitness facility. Static stretching is one of the most common, right? We, we reach down, we touch our toes, we hold. Static stretching would be holding for 20 to 40 seconds. We have another thing called ballistic stretching. That's when you're kind of popping down there and you're doing little uh, quick touches. That one's gonna be a little, a little worse in the very beginning because it, it's, the body revs up for exercise a little quicker. So we, if we're gonna stretch, we wanna always make sure we're stretching for, if we're doing static stretching, we're stretching for flexibility. Ballistic is kind of movement, kind of that um, if we're getting ready. So if we are gonna do any stretching beforehand, that ballistic stretching sometimes can be better, but I still think the movement preparation that we'll talk about is, is the ultimate um, warm up for you. Uh, doing that static stretching before the workout though can overextend the muscles and actually drain them of their power and strength necessary for your actual workout or your activity that you're going to do. And what we're talking about is think of the, again, the muscles as rubber bands, what we're doing when we're stretching and we're just pulling them out and we're just holding them there. And the rubber band, if it was brittle, if it was tight, now you're pulling that tight brittle band and you're holding it there. It's not ready for that just yet. It needs to be warmed. It needs to be pulled and released, pulled and released. It needs to be warmed up. So just static stretching alone is going to use a lot of exertion and a lot of energy from the muscles just to hold that stretch. So that's what we talk about draining the power and the strength out of the muscle. Now, doing five to 10 minutes on the treadmill, that's a real effective way of increasing the heart rate, the respiratory rate, and you're going to get some muscle tissue temperature, right? We're going to warm up the muscles. That's where the whole phrase comes from. And in, you know, it's more of a general warm up because the movements involved don't really mimic the movements performed during a resistance training routine. So this is something we talk about a lot. Movement preparation is preparing your body for the movement that you're gonna do. If you're gonna hike, we're gonna do a lot of hip flexor, glute and calf work. If you're gonna do upper body, we're gonna make sure we do some shoulder, back and chest uh, prep exercises to get that moving because we want to make sure we're mimicking the movement that we're about to do. Uh, one of the best examples is you see it a lot in the weightlifters. They'll do a rep and warm up set on the bench. So just the bar, they'll do about 10 before they put the plates on and actually put the weight in. That's actually a early form of movement preparation. We're preparing the body for that movement with a lighter rehearsal, if you will. So, in, in, a, in essence here, we want to ideally perform a specific warm-up before our resistance training or activity in order to prepare those muscles and joints involved for the demands of that resistance exercise or that activity that we're working on. All right, so that's what we're looking at. So why movement prep? Think of it as a pregame for the muscles. By performing movement prep, your, muscle, your muscles are now loose, active, and ready for action. When we do movement prep, a lot of times what I like to say to folks is it's like you're in the second quarter at the beginning of a game. We, we, we use this a lot in uh, young youth sports uh, a couple of years ago where we saw teams just in soccer and lacrosse, we saw teams scoring more goals and being more uh, aggressive in that first quarter just by having them do some movement prep ahead of time. And these are young kids that are already pr pretty pliable, but when you really put them in that movement prep, situation, they get even more pliable. And now they're like feeling like they're in the second quarter of a game right out of the gate. Um, believe it or not, 
movement preparation can also activate your central nervous system. Muscle and fascia contain sensory receptors that sense tension, length change, and rate of length change. Movement preparation exercises actually engage these sens sensory receptors in both the contractile and the elastic tissues to fully involve that central nervous system and prepare it for the muscles to be used in that workout. So basically, it's the brain talking to the muscles, talking to the body saying, okay, we're getting ready for this. Um, we're going to increase blood circulation. We'll also increase that with cardio, but this is, it, it's, we're also going to get it from movement prep as well. Um, also, by rehearsing movement patterns in slower controlled tempos uh, before adding resistance or moving at a fast speed, we're preventing that injury, right? We're, we're taking it easy. We're slowly starting into it so we don't get injured. When the body is properly warmed up, your muscles and joints are ready for maximum flexibility, which means you can perform each exercise with proper form, like deep squats, for instance. We're going to basically, in a nutshell, maximize the results, minimize the injury. That's what we're looking at with movement preparation. Now, an effective movement preparation sequence involves all the fund foundational movement patterns of exercises. We're talking about lunging, squatting, pushing, pulling, and rotating. These are our fundamentals when we look at movement patterns. We have a lunge pattern, we have a squat pattern, we have a push, pull, and a rotation pattern. We wanna start with slow controlled movements and gradually progress to challenging fast-paced multi-directional movements. Multi-directional just means that we may take a lunge backwards and then twist our body against that lunge, right? We're going in different direction. We wanna work through the different planes of motion as well. By, uh, the body can take about eight to 12 minutes to really fully warm up. So what that means is we wanna set aside that proper time. So if you're coming to your workout a little late and expecting great results, you're gonna to have to extend your workout a little bit because the great results actually come from how we warm up. They actually say that a, you know, the, if we're not working out, if we're not warming up correctly, sorry, we're not going to actually end up working out correctly because we're already starting at a disadvantage. So, you know, the biggest thing with this is set aside that time. And once you really get good at this, eight to 10 minutes is all you're going to really need. I usually get it done at about eight to nine. Traditionally, movement prep is actually linked to specific movement that will, that you'll be performing in your workout. The 10 exercises that I'm going to give you for a routine really cover most of the, uh, most if not all the major muscle groups. So it's going to do a full plethora, if you will, of all the muscles and all the movement preparation that you need. But if you're ever interested in movement prep to a specific warm-up or a specific workout, I'm sorry, that you're doing, uh, I always recommend reach out to one of your coaches. They'll be happy to put together one of those movement preparations for you just to kind of guide you through, okay, this is the workout we're doing. This is the movement preparation that we should be doing as well. All right, so for the movement prep routine, I'm going to actually, in the, and we'll go ahead and let me put it in the chat for all of you. And then we'll go. So this, um, this link that I'm putting in the chat is an open link that everybody can click on. It'll have the descriptions. It'll have the, the, uh, the exercises that you need. We'll also make sure that when we send out the recording and uh, post it, that we'll have that, this movement prep routine also available for you as well. A little side note before we uh, finish up here, the movement prep exercises do come from uh, performance training expert, Mark Verstegen. Uh, he had a book on high performance functional training called Core Performance. Uh, Verstegen is a staple in the performance field. He's one of the ones that really uh, dived into movement prep first and started using it in athletics and saw huge, huge um, successes from it. So, you know, from there, it's just kind of picked up. And so these, these exercises are actually right out of his top 10. So that's why I stuck with them because I think they're uh, amazing, and I think they're the best exercise exercises to get the body warmed up. Now, another disclaimer on here, if anything ever causes pain or discomfort, we discontinue. That's what we reach out to the coaches for. That's what we, uh, what we want to, you know, ask somebody like myself or any of your coaches, how can I adjust this routine? Because this exercise, I can't do this exercise. Maybe there's some bad, uh, bad knees or bad hips. 
uh, glutes could be tight. These are different things that we can adjust. Uh, my recommendation is to try these out. There's some modifications in there and as well as there's some progression. This can actually be used as a workout when we first start. And then it can move along to a to just a warm up. So I usually like to start with all of my clients as this is if I haven't met with them, let's do this as a workout for one week. Try this three times three times a week and this will get the, the heart pumping, get the body going. And then uh, as we get into the actual workout, this becomes the uh, movement preparation. And then I adjust the movement preparation based on fitness assessments, uh, functional assessments, things like that. So uh, everybody should have that link. If you don't, again, we'll be sending it out uh, as needed. And, um, you know, I encourage you all to try them out, try the exercises out. Um, you know, do what you can to be, um, you know, as successful and as fast with these. One of the other things is sometimes we take the time in between. Movement prep is made to go one, two, three, four, five, six, go right through them. So doing these on a consistent basis, that's gonna be where we get the biggest and best results. All right, so again, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Um, I will, uh, oh, somebody wanted the link. I'm gonna re resubmit it here if you just joined. It should go back into the chat now. Um, again, Thank you for the time. I know I went a little over, so my apologies, but uh, if you do want to stay on, I'll take about five minutes or so. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. If not, uh, thank you for uh, joining me today. Awesome. Yeah, feel free to come off mute if you want to. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody get something out of the routine. Hopefully you enjoy. Hopefully we all stay healthy and injury-free. Ah, the inverted hamstring is going to be almost like a bird dip. Uh, so an inverted hamstring is there to exactly what we say it is invert the hamstring. We're uh, using the hamstring to warm up or inverting the planted leg when we actually move in that bird dip type position. Uh, Lisa, the link is right here, Lisa. I'll put it back in uh, for that workout. But yes, we will be seeing, oh, oh, for this video, yes, I will be sending out the link for that as well. Awesome. All right, well, I don't see any questions. So, uh, oh. oh, hey, Ken, oh, I got a question. Go. Yes, sure. I um, just kind of like sprained my right foot, not really my ankle or that. Do you have any um, exercises you recommend? Like they said to hold off on doing anything for like six weeks and then, because uh, there was like a small, a small fracture where the ligament didn't tear, it pulled away a piece of the bone between the third and fourth like toe area. Um, so I can, I can walk, but um, you know, I'm, I'm going to need to work on the ligaments and stuff in my uh, ankles and that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, we always side on the caution of letting rest happen first, letting recovery happen first. Mm -hmm. uh, following that recovery, as you're starting to feel better, I'd really focus on ankle mobility. So um, it's kind of a kneeling exercise where you're uh, shifting back and forth on the ankle. This is once you're feeling better. But mm -hmm. the, the biggest things that you can do are core activities, because the core is the foundation of movement, right? So one of the one of the great exercises is we call a um, dead bug exercise, and you can look that up uh, as yep. well. I don't have it on the screen, but a yeah, dead I know bug which one that is. is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you can also flip it over for a bird dog exercise where you're on all fours as long as you can uh, stay off that toe and go in mm -hmm. there, working the core and then working any upper body um, is obviously a good, um, good exercise to do. I would reach out to your coaches though as you're healing because. Um, you know, your coaches are going to be able to walk you through that. Be, there is some things that come to mind, but I don't know, you know, your specific uh, whole fitness uh, assessment, or I don't know your movement pattern. So I would say reach out to one of the coaches. Um, and then if, you know, one of us uh, on the portal can help you, we would definitely love to walk you through that, that routine, because there, there are things that you can do to kind of get you back and kind of work as you're letting that uh, heal. heal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Ken. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, Paula. Thank you so much. Have a good one.
Right. Well, I will. I know we're running low on time for everybody. So again, thank you so so much for joining me. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day, and hope you enjoy some of the movement prep preparation exercises. We'll see you next time in the next uh, take ten. Thanks, everyone.